part two continue with a group of soldiers surround the stranger who magically appeared in their submarine. She turns out to be the lieutenant who knew the disaster was coming hours before the first deadly sunrise. After running away from the soldiers sent to kill her, he somehow managed to survive for many days. The commander and Olivia keep her prisoner and torture her to get her talking. In the living quarters, Felix finds a crawl space under a bed and realizes that the woman had been living under the submarine for many days. He informs the commander which pushes the lieutenant to finally talk. She introduces herself as Haddis, an intelligence officer at Inserlik Air Base. After finding out about the sun, she searched for a way to survive the apocalypse and ended up in the submarine. She has been living in the lower compartment, spying on everyone. She even knows that Felix has nightmares. Rana double-crossed her colleague to be in the submarine expedition and many other secrets about the people on board. When the commander and Olivia are the only ones in the room, Haddis reveals that the chief was hiding something from them because she heard him trying to contact the outside world. Olivia refuses to believe that her father lied to her, but Haddis calls her a fool for thinking so. She also mentions Victoria's name and insinuates that Victoria knows something the others don't. The commander and Olivia are shocked. They decide to keep a close eye on Victoria to see if Haddis is telling the truth. They also check the chief's room and find a diary inside. In it, he has crossed out Armin's, Felix's, Benson's, and Rana's names but there is a circle over Victoria's name. This further strengthens their suspicion that Victoria knew about the disaster before everyone else. At the same time, Victoria sneaks into the airbase information room and logs into a database. She secretly tries to connect with someone but is unsuccessful. Back in the submarine, two soldiers get sick and start vomiting. There is a chance that canned food may still be edible, so the soldiers set off to collect as much canned food as they can. The commander and Olivia decide that Haddis could be of great use to them because she knows how the army database works. If there is someone alive in the world, the only way they can communicate with them is by using Haddis's expertise. As everyone continues looking for food, Victoria and Benson get into an argument. Benson is getting eccentric because of the pills he took earlier. He has a hard time talking and gets into arguments with everyone. Victoria understands that he suffers from mental health problems and sends Armin to talk to him. Armin tries reasoning with his friend but Benson seems to have lost the will to live. Meanwhile, Haddis and the commander look into NATO's database to find more information about Victoria. To their surprise, they discover that Victoria has worked with NATO on a project before. The project was related to finding alternate habitats for humans under the sea. The commander knows that this could not be just another coincident, but only finds out that they are Russians trying to make contact with a space station. A while later, Armin, Victoria, Rana, and Felix discover a storage full of canned goods. They celebrate for a while before realizing the sun has ruined all canned food as well. The group now has 30 minutes to board the submarine before it descends into the sea again. Victoria and Benson sit down near the sea to rest for a while. Benson opens up to Victoria about his mental health and how he has never felt like he belonged in this world. He claims to be tired of living and wants to see the next sunrise. Victoria begs him to return to the submarine, but he remains adamant in his decision. In the following scene, the submarine is deep inside the sea. Armin sees Victoria zoning out and asks her what is wrong. She tells him about Benson and how she couldn't convince him to stay alive. Armin freaks out and tries to jump out to save his friend. However, Victoria stops him, and the two cry, mourning their friend's death. Outside, Benson faces the sunrise and accepts his fate. The next night, the submarine emerges from the water, and Armin runs out to look for his friend. To his horror, Benson's dead body lies on the ground. He hugs it and cries for several minutes. After grieving to his heart's content, he joins Haddis in the control room. She tracks the airplane they saw last night and discovers that it has landed in Bulgaria near a dam area. This could mean that there are people who survived by hiding inside the dam, and they could have resources they are willing to share with the group. Just when they think this is their main destination, they receive a pre-recorded message from Jijon, Spain calling out survivors and offering help. This place is a mine that claims to have food and resources. The commander gets the final say on which place they will visit, either the dam which is also a NATO base, or the mine. He chooses the NATO base which Victoria is not very happy about. Olivia thinks that Victoria's resistance is strange considering that she has worked with NATO before. A few hours later, the commander is going through the chief's notebook once again. This time, he finds a note with a frequency on it. This proves that the chief knew more people were alive outside and was trying to communicate with them. The commander uses frequency to investigate what the chief was hiding. He hears something about a base in Norway and decides to divert the submarine to this location. In Victoria's room, 
Armin and she bond over her birthday. By the end of the conversation, they end up kissing. Suddenly, the commander rings an alarm to inform everyone about his decision to go to Norway. Victoria protests and points out that Norway is at least 10 days away. They are running out of food supplies and need to get to a place where food is abundant. The closest place is the minefield which has guaranteed them food and security through the announcement. In the end, the commander agrees to stop at the mine out of pressure. Only hours later, they reach their destination and hear the same message about shelter and food. A bunch of soldiers, Armin's group, Olivia, and the commander set off to look for the mine. When they reach the place, only Armin, Victoria, the commander, and a soldier board the elevator to get underground. The rest stay outside because none of them know if the miners inside are friends or foes. The mine is dark and seems empty which makes the group question their decision. Suddenly, a man appears behind and holds a soldier hostage. Armin tries to reason with the man and get him to cooperate. Soon, a bunch of miners come out of hiding and surround the group. They reveal that the message was fake and they just wanted someone to come to rescue them. If they had sent a simple help signal, they knew no one would come which is why they tricked the soldiers into thinking they had food. The miners ask to be taken into the submarine with the soldiers. Armin realizes that they have been outnumbered and tries to talk to the leader of the miners. However, the commander loses patience and starts firing at them. A fight breaks out and a soldier is killed immediately. Armin struggles to survive while Victoria runs towards the elevator. When Rana and the rest hear gunshots, they immediately start trying to fix the elevator that has somehow stopped working. Victoria, who is still running away from the miners, bumps into a bunch of people being held prisoners. To her horror, they reveal that the miners have been cannibalizing them to survive. Outside, Olivia can see the chaos her friends have gotten into. She asks Rana and Felix to take care of the elevator, and jumps down the mine using a rope. After a while of searching, she meets Victoria, and the two run toward the elevator again. By this time, Armin and the commander also arrive but are being followed by the blood-hungry miners. Armin runs to the control room and holds a button to start the elevator. It starts moving without him but he manages to hang onto the floor and save his life. Finally, everyone gets inside their cars to escape because the miners are bound to take the next elevator. Everyone drives away but the car Armin and Victoria are on doesn't have the key. They have to run on foot as the miners follow them. When they finally reach the dock, the soldiers come to their rescue and start firing at the miners. Still, one of them manages to catch Victoria and hold her hostage. He orders everyone to put their guns down but the commander refuses to oblige. As a result, a shootout ensues and Victoria is killed. Armin drops in shock and has to be carried away before the sun comes up. Hours later, the commander is back in the submarine. He goes through the chief's logs and finally gets the password right. He finds out that their submarine was not on a random mission when the disaster started. In fact, they were secretly sent to rescue Armin and his submarine. The mission was a direct command from NATO who knew about the disaster two years ago. Even Victoria knew about the plan and was working with NATO to find habitable spaces underwater. Somewhere else, Armin wakes up and has forgotten about Victoria's death because of a concussion. As it slowly hits him, he runs outside and starts assaulting the commander, blaming him for Victoria's death. Armin has to be held prisoner so he won't hurt anyone else. Felix and Rana protest against the commander. Till now, they were working to germinate seeds artificially so they could grow plants on the submarine. But now, they refuse to continue working until Armin is left free. The commander disregards their demands and asks his soldiers to continue the mission even though they have no expertise in biology. A day later, the soldiers realize that they do not know anything about the germination process and desperately need Felix and Rana's help if they want to survive. In the meantime, Olivia goes to talk to Armin and tells him about Victoria and how she knew about the disaster. Armin refuses to believe her, proclaiming that the commander has lost his mind and wants to divide the group to maintain his power. He promises to prove his point and calls the commander to talk in private. The two men face each other, both refusing to back down from their points. Armin wants to teach the commander a lesson, so he suggests a proposition. He will convince Felix and Rana to work but in turn, the commander will have to leave two of his soldiers to die when they stop at their next destination. Initially, the commander refuses but he eventually agrees to sacrifice Altas and another soldier for the rest of the crew. Just when he admits this, Armin reveals that their conversation is being broadcasted to the entire submarine, and his soldiers have heard him getting ready to sacrifice them. This pins everyone on Armin's side and the commander is asked to resign from his post. When he refuses, they hold him prisoner and lock him inside a room. Olivia takes charge of the submarine and everyone on board. After that, she gets a hold of her father's logs and confirms that the commander was right about the mission, and Victoria's play in it. Armin still doesn't believe it and wants Olivia to call a number displayed in the database. The call goes through and an older man picks it up. 
He turns out to be Armin's father, the millionaire who organized the entire expedition. He was one of the few ones who knew the disaster was coming and was ready for it. He also sent Victoria to his son so she could convince him to join her on the submarine and save his life. The man reveals that he is on an island somewhere in the Indian Ocean. He is safe and sound and has all the resources in the world. He ends the call after calling Armin and his group to the island as well. Armin takes some time to comprehend what just happened. The others are relieved to have found a place where they can survive, but he knows that his father is not trustworthy. Before joining him in the Indian Ocean, the team wants to stop at NATO's headquarters where they think they will get equipment to grow seeds artificially. Olivia thinks that they might not need the seeds altogether if they get to Armin's father. But Armin is adamant about having a backup plan. In the following scene, they finally stop at the NATO headquarters which happens to be a dam. Rana and a soldier go out to look for seeds while Armin goes into the headquarters, looking for survivors. At the same time, Altus sees a missile approaching their submarine and alerts everyone. Chaos ensues among the soldiers while outside. Armin comes across a man pointing his gun at another. The series ends when Armin stops the guy who fires a shot at him. Armin lies on the ground remembering everything that happened to him in the past few days. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Stay tuned for the next series. Thanks for watching.